Thank, <clears throat> thank you for coming to our graduation this afternoon. In order to uh, be a blessing to these uh, young people and their families, if you have children that are three years old and younger, we do have nurseries in this hallway over here. And if you'd rather not put them in there, then we have seats you can get in the uh, foyer back there. We just want to let them have a great memory about this. Uh, we are a ministry of Faith Baptist Church. Our school is a part of the ministry like anything else uh, at our church. And so this is going to be a little bit of a church service. We will not take an offering, although I thought that would be good if we did that. But we're going to turn to a, a hymn in your hymn book there. should be one in front of you. If, there, if there's not one in front, it's underneath your seat. Uh, number 334. It's at Calvary, 334. Hopefully you can find a book somewhere if you don't know it. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died. Welcome, or this afternoon, thanks for coming, and uh, the years, it's hard to even uh, realize how fast the years go by. Uh, we sat there with uh, kindergarten graduation a week ago and thought, oh, these kids are going to graduate in a hundred years or something, <laughs> and um, then the sixth and eighth grade graduation, uh, Miss Ryan was talking about it, and, and she, three of the sixth grade graduates, she taught their parents she started teaching when she was four, and uh, um, longevity is a wonderful thing uh, to be a part of God's work for years and years and years, and, and uh, welcome. I know uh, many of you are from out of town and other places. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we're here to uh, just, just pay our respects uh, to you, really. The graduates get all the attention, but what did they do? <laughs> you know, it's the moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas that did all the work. Uh, and uh, you, but you know what? These kids have done right on purpose. They have, and uh, and in, in order to be in our school, they pay a price. Uh, besides the price, the parents pay in tuition. Uh, they do. They uh, these young people. I've told them often. They uh, they have chosen to do right, and uh, and I've got a lot of respect for a young person in this world that chooses to do the right thing. Why don't we have a word of prayer, and we'll get started? Thank you, Lord, that we could be here together, and we do thank you for the families all the little contri contributions made by relatives and loved ones and of course Sunday school teachers and school teachers, all the pieces that brought us to this day. We thank you for our graduates. We ask your blessing on them and uh, their future. Most of all, Lord, that they would live for you and honor you. Bless our evening, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, our school is patriotic. We love America. And we're not here to bash it or its history, so we are going to stand, if you're able, and we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance, which is hidden behind the... <laughs> there, we'll get it up there. Uh, we say the Pledge of Allegiance every day in school. So, ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, we are not real formal here. We love to just mix it up a little bit, and you'll, you'll have a good time. If this is your first time here, you'll find out we like to enjoy our graduations. They're not boring. And if you need to take a photo at any time, just slip up. Maybe not up here, but down here somewhere would be good. Uh, if you want to just grab a photo at any time, that'd be just fine. Uh, we have teachers at our school that are excellent. Uh, the, many of them have been teaching for some many decades and have been at this a long time and God has been extremely merciful and gracious to our school. We have kids uh, gra 
graduates that are serving the Lord either as uh, pastors or teachers or as lay people working uh, in a local Baptist church serving the Lord and uh, last time I checked about 90 plus percent of the graduates from our school are still continuing on for the Lord and uh, that's that's a big deal if you don't know those kind of stats but um, God has been very good to us and we have great teachers uh, and I just appreciate what they do they they don't get paid much um, and but they are faithful to help our young people and we are blessed to have them also we have a couple of secretaries uh, Mrs. Payne been in the office this year uh, while Mrs. Lewis has had to operate from her home and she has been bedridden for the with a physical issue for the, the entire school year can you imagine what that would be like but it didn't stop her she kept on doing things for the school for the church she's just a great lady but Mrs. Payne had carried a, quite a load this year uh, she was <laughs> if she came into the office and her eyes were kind of glazed over that's 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 all right it was happening all the time but but she did a super job, came through with everything. Um, also, uh, after the service, uh, we, we have our te your teacher of your student will have, uh, if they earn the honor roll uh, or these other issues, other awards that they have. We have two t levels of honor roll. I, taught, I, I had junior hires all year, believe me. I'm, okay. Friday was a good day, <laughs> uh, but uh, we have two levels of honor roll. If you get uh, all B's or, or better, uh, you get uh, uh, principal's honor roll. If you get all A's, you get the pastor's honor roll because it's the highest honor uh, there is to have be the pastor's honor roll. Uh, and if you if your child managed somehow to get through the school year without getting any demerits, because we give demerits just over just about everything. Uh, they they did quite a feat doing that, or else they maybe you slipped them some money and they bribed the teacher. I don't know, but just for the future, I am bribable. I want you to know that. Uh, so they're, they, they I think they're in the list inside your insert. Also, uh, those of you who really wanted to have your kid away from home every day, there is a, a perfect attendance award. Also for some people, they they should all be in that in that uh, paper that you got there. In a moment, we're going to have the class come in, but uh, this is uh, our 34th graduating class, and God has just been good all these years. 30, just finished 34 years, Faith Baptist Academy, uh, started in 1989, and uh, this class here is just another good bunch of kids, so we'll have them come in now. they didn't fall up the stairs they talked about that earlier we also uh, each year honor some people at help in our school uh, we we lit honestly do not charge enough tuition to pay for all the bills uh, money has to come from people who give scholarships and things like that but also uh, it takes a lot of volunteers to get the things done we need to get done and so each year we try to honor people who have done kind of above and beyond uh, for that year, and we call him the friend of the academy. And uh, we used to give a plaque out, but you know, going out to dinner at a nice restaurant is really a lot better. So that's what we started doing. Um, and this year, we have three of them. I'll get that. I'll, you know what? I'll get that to you later. I'll just I'll, you can just stay in your seat, and I won't embarrass you. I won't make you come up. But uh, first one is Brother Lyman Williams. He's over here. Brother Williams, stand up for just a minute. Hey, 
And those of you know, Brother Williams has been here a very, very long time. He's, uh, but this year we had a need for our young men to uh, learn just practical things. We're, we're losing that in America. We, we're, trades are dropping because, because of these woke society, I'm tired. But anyway, don't get me going on that. But we had, we, our young men, uh, we want to teach them just things, you know, how to fix a drywall hole or how to wire up an outlet or fix something on a car, you know, all kinds of different things. And Brother Williams stepped up to that task, and the boys would go over to his place usually once a week, and each week he had either himself or other men would come in and teach the boys something that, to learn how to fix something. And honestly, that is a great deal. Uh, for one thing, it impresses wives. I fix something, my wife thinks I'm great. I mean, yeah, true. Don't tell her what the truth, but, but he was a, a, just a great blessing. He, he, not just he did it, but he organized all that stuff too. And anyway, he's, he's our first friend of the academy. The next one, Mrs. Heather Young. Where are you? you just wave. All right. Uh, put a little blurb in there about the recycling moms, not recycled moms, all right? Uh, you know, every time you take an aluminum can and throw it in the trash, you just it's just like taking a nickel and tossing it into the trash. And we have a saying around here, no cash in the trash. Because we want those aluminum cans and those plastic bottles because each year we generate thousands and thousands of dollars from people giving us their recycled aluminum cans and plastic bottles. And Mrs. Young organized all that this year. Now, for her and the ladies that helped, that is a dirty, stinky job. Uh, people don't, you know, they don't wash out all their cans and things when they hand them in. So anyway, she did a super job helping our school make extra money. We're going to have another can drive in September. So keep all of your aluminum cans and plastic bottles over the summer. But I want to appreciate the, Mrs. Young for doing all that. Thank you, and we have a nice gift card for her. And then the last one, Brother Tim Grisson. Come on, you gotta stand up. Brother Tim, uh, he, he graduated from our school also quite a while ago, wasn't it? <laughs> And if you know Brother Tim, he is just, he is an incredible man. Uh, honestly, there are very few people as faithful as Tim Grissom. He is a hard, hard worker. But the thing we want to honor him for is all of his work in the orchestra that he does for our school. Uh, and of course, you know, in church, he's in charge of the orchestra. And when a kid enters junior high, we make him take an instrument. It's because it's just good. To know how to play one and he <laughs> some kids don't want to take an instrument and he has to deal with that too uh, but he does develop many young people that go on and follow into the orchestra into our church and he spends so much time on that and you know that he loves it and just appreciate him uh, I did ask his wife you know where where do you think he'd want to get a gift card to for and she said she's like Tim's getting a $50 gift card to Del Taco. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. We're going to have a video, video here in a moment. Uh, this is our junior class showing their appreciation for the senior class. Now, Brother Trent Bailey edited this, but he wanted everyone to know he had nothing to do with it, right? <laughs> so, are you ready back there? All right, we'll watch this little video.
attack in yesterday's war? No. no. I did. But I only got one star, though. Bro, you were so trash. How do you only get one star? Bro, I only got 33%. Bro. Dude, I don't even know why these guys are in our clan. Should we kick them out, Jomar? Yes, kick them out. Alright. I fought a barbarian king in the woods yesterday. Shanna, that's not even in the game. What's up? Who invited her? Hello, class. I love Dave Ramsey. And Dave Ramsey is the one who inspired me to be a chicken farmer. And today, I'm going to be teaching you guys why you should be a chicken farmer just like me. Doesn't that say money scams? Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> wrong slide, wrong slide. That's for a different class. All right, as you guys can see, we have this red arrow, and this represents the chicken industry. And you see, the chicken industry, we started at the bottom, right? We were pioneers at first. We were laughed at. We were mocked. But we grew, and we grew, and we grew, and we grew, and now we're at the top. And I need your guys' help to keep making that go higher and higher and higher. You can go on Google any website that I created and look it up. Chicken farming is the number one money-making sales in America. All right? Yeah, and if you look in this next slide, right here, this is me at the top. Right? And if you see, there's an egg behind me because I'm a chicken seller. And if I could get two more people to sell for me, and they could get more people to sell for me, and they could get more people to sell for them, we could make as much money as we could have. Isn't that like a pyramid scheme? Good point. I'm glad you said that. Most people think it's a pyramid scheme, but if you flip it around, it's actually a funnel supplying money to everyone. Dude, I love funnels. Bro, Wait, sign me up, dog. No. Yeah, we have sign up sheets right here. Sign me up, dog. Let's go. Here we go, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Portals. And you see, that's why with Pythagorean theorem that we just oh Ruby, are you okay? Hello, Ruby. I have chocolate to dogs. What? <laughs> Say that again. I feed chocolate to dogs. Ah, uh, nah. nah. <laughs> All right. Guess what happened to me the other day? So I was playing my piano in my living room and I was playing this song that I was supposed to practice for my lesson and I really liked it and I was, I was thinking I could play it for you sometime. Do you want, do you want me to do that for you? Yeah. Uh, anyways, and then, and then I, I, oh, I went to the store and I saw a corgi and it was wearing a donut shirt. Oh my goodness, I was, oh, so cute. I want a corgi one day. You know, do, do you like dogs? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Anyways, and you know how you like that one baseball player, Otani? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really like him. He's kind of bad. Oh, yeah, that's real nice. Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Someone help me get his attention. He's not listening to me. Bruce. Brendan. Bruce, I got the Bell X1. The Bell X1? Jazz. Oh, Jazz. Oh, the Canadian Brass. Canadian Brass. I got Halo and Call of Duty 2. Halo? Call of Duty 2? Let's go, bro. Okay, so let's oh. go. Bye. Lillian, when did you get here? Oh, well, bye. See you all. Let's go practice later. Bye. Let's go. See you later. Ha! John, don't make eye contact. Sorry, sorry. Do you have the goods? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I have it. Um, slide me the goods. No, slide you the cash. No, no, I want the cash first. Alright, fine. That's the deal then. Give me the, give me the goods now, before someone sees. Hey, okay. fine. Right. Where are they? What? What is Did it? Did we make a deal for only three oranges? I asked for six. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Give me them now. Okay, okay fine, fine, fine. I'm sorry, okay? But you gotta hurry, they're gonna see us. Hurry, quick. You dropped an orange. That's an orange. Good. You can have these apples for free too. Just, just get out of here. Yeah. I'm late. Look, that's gonna kill me. Hey, Ruby. What are you doing? Oh, um, the other day I read an article about how minerals from the earth can be better than um, protein powder. Oh, Rip, is that so, huh? Yeah. And so you're doing what? You're out here collecting minerals for your drink. Yeah. Does Brother Beal know you're out here? Okay. I guess if Brother Beal knows you're out here, he knows you're drinking dirt. Yes. Okay. Minerals. Alright, Ruby, sounds good. See ya. Oh, hey Ruby. Hey Ruby. Hi, Nolan. What, what are you doing? I'm just collecting minerals for my water. Is that dirt water? It's minerals. I don't know if that's healthy for you. It is. Okay, okay. see you inside, Ruby. See you guys later.
And the Bible says that if you are not saved, then you shall take part in the lake of fire with eternal hell and death. And if you are sleeping in chapel, the Lord will come to you and say, Wake up, sinner! This is my time to tell you a little bit about the graduates. Uh, start with Noel Lynn. Uh, Noel Lynn made a decision to accept Jesus as her savior when she was very young, but she could not recall it very well, so she got the reassurance of her salvation in 2018 while she was with her parents. And she was baptized a few months later, along with, guess who? Her sister. She's been involved in orchestra, nursery, the rest home ministry, teen choir, and the bus ministry. She led her first soul to Christ when she was nine years old. She was also a tutor to younger students during her 10th grade year. She plans to attend Golden State Baptist College in the fall. When asked what important principles she has learned at Faith Baptist, she responded, respect authority and faithfulness is invaluable. Nolan is very studious about her studies. She is serious about much of life, and she's dedicated to a healthy diet. When I've taken the girls uh, for sports teams to Starbucks, what does she get? Frappuccino? A latte? No, an apple. Someone should warn Manny and Mike about this. All right. <clears throat> David Campalas. On his sixth birthday, his mom took him to eat at McDonald's. While there, she explained the gospel, and he got saved. About the only good thing to come out of McDonald's, actually. Uh, a few weeks later, he was baptized. He's been faithful to teen soul winning throughout his teen years. He's been involved in teen choir and the bus ministry. He was in the seventh grade when he won someone to Christ for the first time. Uh, while working in the bus ministry, he preached on the bus for the first time when he's in 10th grade. He plans to attend Golden State Baptist College in the fall. He has learned while at Faith Baptist Church to respect and obey authority and to be faithful. Uh, actually, David, he never has been a disciplinary problem for me as a, the principal in all his years at Faith Baptist Cat Academy. Um, and uh, Brother Andy, please don't look surprised about that, right? Uh, David is an excellent, and he's very bright as a student. Uh, he participated in our athletic program every year. He doesn't say much, at least not around me. Uh, not sure if he would be too confident in public speaking, but God does have a way of using people in unusual ways. And since you should never say never to God, <laughs> I once said I never want to work with teenagers when I was younger. <clears throat> and since David has probably already thought he would never be a preacher, never know, David, never know. All right. Bruce Grissom, he made a decision for salvation after a Sunday evening church service at home with his mom. He waited three years to get baptized. He had hydrophobia at the time. He has been heavily involved in ministry throughout his teen years. Teen soul winning, teen choir, orchestra, bus route have all been weekly events. He was 12 when he led his first soul to Christ. Um, and by the way, I hope you're seeing a pattern here for our, our graduates. Uh, the... We th I just I rattle these things off. They take hours and hours to perform each one every week. And our, our young people are dedicated workers in the ministry for God. Uh, the first time he taught or preached was on a bus route. He plans to attend Commonwealth Baptist College in Lexington, Kentucky in the fall. Through his years here, he has learned a good work ethic. He's also learned that integrity and respect are valuable assets. Because of his boisterousness and rowdiness, <laughs> Bruce has found himself in trouble many times. No, just kidding. Uh, Bruce really is a very hard worker, just like his dad and his mom. He's a chip off the block of his parents. And I would recommend him if anyone needs a faithful hard worker, an employee, he's the guy you want. Um, oh, I did forget one. I almost forgot one. I almost forgot one lesson that he learned. Probably the most important lesson he learned 
while at FBA is the three L rule. He'll get it in a minute, all right? He'll get it. Slow freight. Tommy Miller. Uh, on April 16, 2011, at the age of six, Tommy accepted Jesus as his savior. A few weeks later, he was baptized by his grandfather, Pastor Clint Miller. At North County Baptist Church, he is an usher and helps run the audio equipment. He's been a soul winner, and he suffers for Jesus while working the snack bar at church. <clears throat> he was 13 years old when he led someone to Christ, his seventh grade friend. He said the first time he preached a sermon was in the preaching class here at the academy, taught by Pastor Valdez, when Mikey Payne was a substitute. I cannot imagine what was going on that day. Uh, <clears throat> Tommy plans to attend Palomar College in the fall and continue serving in his church. He felt the most important thing he has learned is to give your entire life to Christ. Amen. Tommy's grandparents, Pastor Clint Miller and, Miller and his wife Candy over here, uh, for me personally, they were very kind to my wife and I when we first started attending here at church back in 1986. That was a while ago. They used to help us in so many ways. I'm really glad we've been able to help them with Tommy. It's been a lot of work, though. Been a lot of, work. <clears throat> of course, our work was cut out to help this young man. I do think we've uh, helped him a little, but maybe the best thing he learned his past two years was to become an Angels fan. I heard he went to a game recently, so, you know, we won't get into that one. All right. <clears throat> John Mark Patterson. He vaguely remembers making a decision for salvation at the age of five, but had no assurance. So after church on October 6, 2021, he spoke to Brother Josh, our youth pastor, and got it settled. The following Sunday, he was baptized by Brother Josh. The ministries he has been involved in are teen choir, teen soul winning, bus route, and orchestra. When he was about 10, he led his first person to the Lord. He first preached a sermon while on Brother Matt Peterson's bus route. He plans to attend Golden State Baptist College in the fall. He has learned while at Faith Baptist Church to go to God with any trials or problems. You'll see a slide in the upcoming video of John studying at home at the dinner table with his head down fast asleep. <laughs> I have witnessed that several times in <laughs> calculus and chemistry. <laughs> In spite of all that, John is a bright student, and he has lots of great potential for the Lord, and I am happy for him and, and look forward to his future. Ruby Scary. Ruby was saved at the age of four, but got assurance when she was 14. She's been involved in the bus route, choir, soul winning, and nursery. Nursery, that's unpopular. She was about eight years old when she won her first soul to Christ. She plans to attend Bible college in the fall to see what the Lord has for her. She has learned to keep pushing forward even when things become difficult. And if you don't know Ruby, she can be a little bit shy. In fact, she's been, she was so shy that she, when she was younger, she decided to continue her education at home for a while. But she came back to us two years ago. Now she's a mature young lady, a real blessing. She's been a perfect fit in our school. And she's been a servant. She helps in our school office this year, and she, she will be missed. And then Lillian Young. Lillian... Lillian was led to the Lord by her mom, sitting beside the Christmas tree in December of 2009. Two years later, she was baptized uh, in July of 2011, also a little hydrophobic, her. She's been a, on a bus route in teen soul winning, nursery, choir, orchestra, vacation Bible school, and has been the teen choir piano player this year. At the age of 12, she was able to lead her first person to the Lord. She learned to teach by becoming a summer tutor for a student. She plans to attend Commonwealth Baptist College in the fall. While at Faith Baptist, Lillian has learned the importance and value of hard work. If you don't know Lillian, she could easily qualify as a NASA space cadet. Beyond gullible, let me tell you. But when it comes to wisdom, she has gained much. And she's made wise choices, and Lord willing, she'll continue to make those. And I will certainly miss having Lillian around here. And they're going to sing a song for you. I was taught. 
on the scriptures before I could read them. I found them to be true. That's why I believe them. With all of my heart, my soul, and my strength, with every song I sing, I choose to be a Christian.
afternoon, parents, friends, teachers, and fellow graduates. It is a great honor to stand here in front of you today on behalf of my class to express the happiness and gratitude we feel in our hearts today. I can still reminisce about the awkward junior high days when we were the lowest on the totem pole. I would frantically roam the halls asking the upperclassmen for the location of the next class or patiently wait for my mom to bring the forgotten pair of white socks for PE. While the weekdays can occasionally seem monotonous, the day-to-day -day experiences are precious memories that I pray I won't forget. To me, graduation day is a day to reflect on the past. It is also a day to appreciate and value my teachers' impact on my life. To Pastor and Mrs. Goddard, thank you for your unwavering commitment to our school. Baptist Church and Faith Baptist Academy have been a blessing and will always feel like home. To Brother Beal, Brother Josh, and my teachers, thank you for creating a safe and nurturing environment and always giving me a chance by forgiving past mistakes. Your passion for teaching and your commitment to my success will not go unnoticed. To Miss Ryan, although I've only been working on the bus for two years, you taught me plenty, pushing me past my limits and the experiences on the bus undoubtedly helped me grow as a soul winner. Most importantly, I want to brag about my family for giving me the best 18 years of my life. Mom and Dad, these few written words can never justify my boundless love for you both. You have been my rock, and I could not have made it today without your guidance and investment. I am forever in debt for the love, attention, and care that you have brought to my blessed life. To my sister and best friend, Sadie, I can't believe it. We have to go our separate ways. You have been my companion my whole life. Soon we will have to say goodbye, so I can only challenge you to thrive by closely walking with God. There are many more things I want to mention, but there is not enough time to say. I will leave my closing thoughts by saying this simple prayer. Thank you. All right. Um, this is the very day that I've been waiting for my entire life. <laughs> Growing up attending a public school, I had never liked school. Until my 11th grade year, I began attending Faith Baptist Academy. I won't lie and say that it was an easy transition, but as it's coming to an end, it has been one of the best decisions and transitions I could have made. I have learned and experienced so many important and valuable things throughout my two years here and have gained so many amazing friendships. I would like to thank Pastor Goddard for putting his trust in the Lord and starting Faith Baptist and leading my family. Thank you to Brother Beal and all my teachers for giving their lives to teach and prepare our younger generation for their future. Thank you to my North County Baptist Church family for being my second family and molding me into the Christian I am today. And most importantly, thank you to my family. Thank you, Grandpa and Mimi, for building your lives on Christ and being such good examples of a Christian to me. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for being the best parents I could have asked for. You guys have taught and given me so much to become successful in the future. To the younger classes, my word of advice is to not take the school for granted because there is truly nothing else like it. You are very blessed to attend. I know it's late for more thank yous, but I would just like to thank my class for everything. We have had so many good laughs and fun times together, and you guys will always be a special part of this journey. Congratulations to you all for reaching this end goal together, and thank you for everyone who came out today to show love and support. that this day would never arrive, yet now here it is, staring us in the face. It seemed like yesterday we were struggling through speedy readers and playing dodgeball or capture the flag during lunch break. Time really does fly, although you are sure it has stopped while you were stuck in chemistry class. <laughs> I will never forget the things we were taught here, not only how to read and write, but also how to do our best, endure hardness, and not give up. These traits have already proven themselves as we go soul winning and work on bus routes. Go bus seven. Thank you, Faith Baptist Academy, for being focused not on, not on not only the academic goals, but on spiritual things as well. I could spend all day talking about what Faith Baptist does for students and still not be able to list all of them. So all I can say is thank you for everything. Teachers and staff, thank you for the pay cuts you took and all the other sacrifices and hard work that you put in for us. Thank you for putting together the quizzes and worksheets, arranging all of the sports games, fundraisers, field trips, school parties, resisting the urge to strangle us sometimes on account of ignorance. <laughs> Dad and Mom, thank you for all the sacrifices you both made, made to have me grow up in a Christian school. Thank you for all the last-minute changes you helped me with the night before 
science for a project was due, or helping me out of a tough spot when we discovered that we could not print out a typed paper for the next day. Without you, I would not be here in more ways than one. Besides the gift of salvation and this great church, you two are the best things God has put in my life. To the next senior class, it always pays to do right and to listen to your leaders. They do more than they do know more than you after all. To the senior class of Amen. This is great, isn't it? And uh, again, thank you for coming. I'll be short because none of you came to hear me, and they won't remember what I say anyway, so why spend the time, okay? But uh, just because somebody's supposed to say something, um, I'll just say in uh, Proverbs, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And the mess our country is in today is because we're trying to do everything without God, without the Bible. And we're trying to raise a generation after generation after generation of young people to teach them how to have peace and fulfillment while throwing out the one who is peace, the one who is prince of peace. And any joys and fulfillment our young people have had is because you as parents and those working with them have engulfed them in the things of God. And as soon as we get outside that, I love our country, but I certainly don't love what our country's become, and it's mainly become what it is because we've forgotten God. Um, these young people uh, have learned so much from our leadership, and again, as the Friends of the Academy uh, were earlier mentioned, um, our young people do well academically, and uh, let's just be honest, some are not the brightest bulbs on the tree, but that doesn't mean they can't be as, as excited, I always tease because the kids know I, I struggled to read until I was actually a uh, pastor. Uh, Tommy's great-grandpa is the one that got me to start reading. Um, he gave me a Louis L'Amour book, and I realized books can be good. And uh, I just, I couldn't, it wasn't I couldn't read, it's just I never found a book worth reading before. <laughs> but, um, you know, you don't have to be what the world calls brilliant to find great blessings and great success. And, uh, but our young people excel academically, but they also excel in character, in diligence, in, um, in, in doing the practical things. And these young people, as so many, um, they've learned to keep pressing on when things were hard. And when the world comes apart, you keep doing what you're supposed to do. And uh, that is what God uses greatly. Um, I just I'd say three quick things. Number one, God has a plan. Not just for our graduates, but for all of us. Number two, God has a new plan. Why does he have a new plan? Because we messed up the first one. <laughs> but he's so good. Yeah. He is so good. And uh, how he rebuilds. And uh, young people, I can assure you, if somebody accidentally makes a mistake, you still have a church, a pastor, family, and friends. And most of all, you have a God. And then thirdly, God equips God never makes a plan for anybody without equipping them to fulfill that plan. And um, young people and all of us here today, uh, I want to encourage you to keep Christ center. Keep him the center of everything. And it is not an easy journey, but I've watched enough people that are a mess. Um, it's not an easy journey anyway. Just will be on a difficult journey with Jesus as on a difficult journey by yourself. And we have a wonderful God. Graduates, we're very proud of you. Remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning. Notice they have an or a, a gold honor cord around their uh, neck, and that is for maintaining a 3.0 or higher. They all got it this year. I was I was a little surprised, well, so, but they all got it. Uh, but we're coming down to the uh, valedictorian, and uh, we we don't bloat our grade GPA by. You know, I see kids graduating with 4.65 average. We're a 4.0 grade point, and uh, you, you, 
know, you gotta get all A's to get a 4.0 throughout your entire high school career. And uh, it came down to two of them really, actually three fairly close to each other. Uh, the two, the top two are separated by 91 one thousandths of a grade point. Uh, in second place, they get nothing except the average. <laughs> it's uh, the salutatorium. Very close, very close to being the winner that was David Kampala. <laughs> He had a surprised look on his face, all right? And uh, this year's valedictorian, Nolan Balo. All right, we're gonna give away the diplomas. Limbalo. You want to slip up for a picture up here? That's fine. If that help you to grab a picture, go ahead. If anybody wants to come up, you can just kind of get down a little bit when you get done. Come on, Dad. <laughs> David Joshua Sestona Kampalis. Going alphabetical, so you can be on deck. Okay. Bruce Allen Grisson. Tommy Walker Miller. John Mark Patterson. <laughs> Ruby Elizabeth Scary. <laughs> Lillian Grace Young. One minute, non uh, non graduate oriented. If you don't, uh, if you're not aware of the mess our country is in, um, you're not paying attention. Maybe you're a part of it. I'm not sure. But um, the big need is education. We've got young people from kindergarten right up being just messed with in their heads, in a, in the most tragic way. And uh, other than church, other than you know a, a church ministry, Sunday school, and bus ministry, and, and raising. A generation in church I don't know anything that would help our country or our families more than getting our kids a Christian education and uh, I want to encourage you to uh, I know many of you are out of town but get your family into, into church into a good Christian school private school um, get your in as far as uh, 
family, use, use some of your money for grandkids or whatever. I mean, you've got to make that decision. But I would encourage you, invest in the next generation. Our country's in big trouble. And uh, if you're not sure what you could do to make a difference, we have a school you could invest in. And uh, there are young people, there are young people who would be in school if there was tuition money. And, um, and, and our, our church puts a ton of money into our school to make it function. But uh, if, you wanna, if you wanna say, I wanna, I'd like to do something for our country's future, what can I do? Put some money into Christian education. And make it. Uh, as soon as we're dismissed here, you can head up the hill, the, the graduates have a table and they have uh, a box there with a slot in it. They're hoping you might put something in and to be a blessing to them. Thank you so much. Remember to forget your things from the, your student's teacher or the rewards and their report cards. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that we get to have a graduation like this. Thank you that these young people have a desire to follow you. I pray you'd help them. they got a lot, of, a lot of pressures coming on them in the next few years. I pray you'd, you'd guide them, give them wisdom, and just bless the day, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Friends in the academy, please see me.